Let's make line design mittens. First, let's watch a story about mittens. This is The Mitten Tree by Candace Christensen. At the end of a long lane in a tidy little house, old Sarah lived alone. Her children had grown up and moved away, but Sarah still remembered the mornings when she walked with them to the blue spruce tree where they waited for the school bus. Now, each morning, she opened her shutters and watched for the new children to arrive. Every chilly morning, Sarah pulled on her warm coat and started down the lane. As she walked past the children on her way to the mailbox, she wished they would smile or wave, but they never did. The children didn't even seem to notice her. Still, when she saw them, she couldn't help but smile. One winter morning after the first snow had fallen, all the children were making snowmen and throwing snowballs, all except for one little boy in a blue cap and coat. Even his boots were a dark shade of blue. He stood away from the others with his hands sunk deep in his pockets. When the school bus arrived, he lingered behind and was last in line. As Sarah watched the little boy climb into the bus, she could see one thing. He had no mittens. All that day, Sarah couldn't stop worrying about the little boy with no mittens. Late in the afternoon, as the sky grew dark, Sarah dug through the basket of yarn scraps she had saved for many years. She found her needles in four shades of blue wool. Then Sarah began to knit. Sarah worked late into the night. When the sun began to rise, she hurried to the bus stop and hung the mittens on the old blue spruce tree. From behind the hedge, Sarah watched. The little boy was the first to arrive. He saw the mittens. He reached up and tried them on. They fit. With a big smile, he made a perfect snowball and threw it high into the winter sky. Soon a little girl in a red coat arrived. Her mittens didn't match. That night, Sarah knitted with red yarn. Every day now, as Sarah went to the mailbox, she watched for children without mittens. Then she would hurry home and knit. Early in the morning, she would hang the new mittens on the tree. The children loved the game. Each day, they would search under every branch and bough for another pair of mittens. Once or twice, Sarah thought that the boy with the blue mittens had seen her, but he always looked away. Night after night, Sarah knitted mittens in every color. Some had stripes, some had hearts, some even had little snowflakes all over them. Somehow, even though she had never spoken to the children, Sarah felt that they had become her new family. On the last day before winter vacation, Sarah awakened before dawn. She took the empty basket that had once held her yarn and filled it to the brim with mittens. Out the door and down the steps she headed. When she got to the blue spruce tree, she hung mittens on every branch. The boy with the blue mittens was the first to arrive. He stood very still and waited for the others. In fact, all the children stood very still for a few minutes, looking at the mysterious, beautiful mitten tree. When they boarded the bus, each child now wore a pair of mittens. Sarah watched as one by one, their faces appeared in the bus windows. Still, no one looked her way as she started home. But Sarah's heart was full. It was as full as when the sounds of her own children had filled her house. As Sarah neared her porch and climbed the steps, she saw something waiting for her. There in the corner was a basket woven with thick brown vines and decorated with a large white bow. In it were balls and barrels of beautiful, colorful yarn. To this day, Sarah knits mittens for all the children in her town. Every time her basket is empty, a new, full one appears. Sarah doesn't know who the yarn is from, and the children still don't know who the mittens are from but someone must. Now that we've watched the story, let's go over our directions. For your supplies, you will need a blank piece of paper or the printed mitten template that you can find on Google Classroom. You will also need to see the line examples page. That is also on Google Classroom. You'll need a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials. First, print the mitten template or follow along with the video to draw your own pair of mittens on a blank piece of paper with a pencil. If you drew your own mittens, outline the shape with a black marker. Then, draw line designs on your mittens with a black marker. Use symmetry to make your mittens a matching pair. After, add color to your mittens with your choice of materials. Make the colors symmetrical so that your mittens match. And lastly, add a colorful background. So we'll be working with symmetry today to make our mittens a matching pair. You can see in my colored example that my mittens match. The designs match and the colors. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started. So to start your project, you will need a piece of paper or the mittens template that you can print from Google Classroom. If you can't print, I will show you how to draw mittens on a regular piece of paper. So you'll need a piece of paper or the mittens template. You can also find these line examples on Google Classroom to look at for ideas on how to decorate your mittens. You will need a pencil, an eraser, a black marker for outlining like a Sharpie, and then some materials to color with. I will be using a variety of things like markers, some watercolors, and some crayons. So I'm going to show you now how to draw a mitten shape if you can't print the template from online. I will be using a black marker to do my drawing on the video so that you can really see what you need to draw, but I would suggest doing this with a pencil first and then outlining it, just in case you need to make any corrections and erase. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a mitten more in the upper left corner because we need to save some space for the other mitten in the lower right corner. So kind of like if you put your two hands here, that's about where our mittens will be. First, we're going to draw a large curved line, almost like a really tall rainbow, but one side is going to stop a little bit above the other. So I'm going to make a big, tall arch. And this line is not gonna go all the way to the bottom, it's gonna stop about right there. Then I'm going to make the part for the thumb. This is another curved line that will start at the edge of the other line and come down. Now we're going to draw a horizontal line across to end the shape then two vertical lines on the sides, and then another horizontal line. There's one mitten. Now we're going to repeat those steps for our second mitten below. This time it's going to be in reverse. So the thumb is going to be on the inside. So I'm going to start with that tall arch where one side is a little bit shorter, but this time it's going to start on the other side. And stop. Now I need to make the thumb shape. Then let's draw that horizontal line to end the mitten shape and two vertical lines on the sides. Then another horizontal line. Now let's draw a string that connects the two mittens. I'm going to use a loopy line shape. Remember, a loopy line goes like this. It's like a curvy line that goes up and down. There's really no right or wrong way to make your loops. So start at the edge of one mitten and just make a curvy and loopy line. Then I'm going to make my line a little bit thicker by adding another loopy line on the side. Now I've drawn my two mittens. Now you should go ahead and outline your mittens with a black marker if you drew these on your own. If you're using the template, then it's already outlined and, and you are ready to add line designs, which is our next step. If you drew it, make sure you erase any extra pencil lines that are showing through after you outline to make your artwork look super neat. So I'm erasing all those extra pencil lines. And now I'm ready to add line designs to my mittens. So we're going to try to make each mitten match. So I'm going to work on one at a time and then repeat my pattern on my second mitten. You can use the line example sheet that is on Google Classroom for ideas, or you can come up with your own. So I'm going to start with the top of my mitten and work my way down. 
using horizontal lines that go across the mitten. So you can start with any kind of line. I'm choosing to start with a dashed line here at the top. I'll do a double dash. Then let's do a loopy line. Then let's do a wavy line. Maybe I'll do a double wavy line. You can follow my pattern if you like, or you can come up with your own. Maybe next I will do a dotted line. You can also do a line of shapes. So here's a line of hearts. Maybe a zigzag line. Spiral line, a row of spirals. I'll do a row of diagonal lines. I'm doing short little diagonals as a pattern. Remember diagonal means a line that goes at an angle. Let's try a cloud line shape or a bumpy line. Maybe I'll just do a straight line next. Maybe a line of triangles. When you get to the thumb, you can repeat your pattern. So I would repeat, I'm repeating that double line and then the cloud line, also some of the diagonal line pattern. Then I'll do the triangle pattern. So it looks like the fabric continues and the pattern continues onto the thumb. Now I think I'll start repeating. I'm gonna do a loopy line. and I'm going to continue this pattern all the way to the bottom. Now we have the cuff of the mitten. You can add a pattern inside here too, or you can decide to leave it solid. I think I'm going to do a pattern that is a vertical, so a pattern that's going up and down. I'm going to turn my paper like this though, and I think I will do repeated wavy lines. You can choose any pattern to repeat inside your cuff though. Now I'm going to repeat the same series of lines on this mitten that I did on my first mitten. So I'm going to start with the dashed line at the top. Then what's next? I see I did a loopy line, so I'm going to do a loopy line. And I'm going to try to repeat it all the way down so that my two mittens match. When we have matching things in art, that is called using symmetry. So symmetry means that two things are exactly the same. These mittens are an example of using symmetry. to add a pattern on the string. You can choose to color yours in if you'd like or add a pattern. I'm just going to do a simple striped pattern that goes all the way through the string. 
your mittens are filled with matching line designs or symmetrical line designs, then you are ready to add color. For mine, I will be using some crayons and some markers, and then I will be painting my background with watercolors. You can use any supply that you have for this. But if you do happen to be painting, make sure you're using some kind of permanent marker for outlining because you don't want your colors to bleed. And when you use a permanent marker, it will stay on the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some color to my mittens. And again, I'm going to do this in a symmetrical pattern. So whatever I do with my color on one mitten, I'm going to do to the other so that it's a matching pair. So I used red, then I'm going to use orange, and I'm doing this on both mittens. You can choose to work on one mitten at a time and then match the other one to the first one, or you can do them both at the same time like I am right here. Whatever is easier for you. Now I've colored in my mittens, I'm going to paint my background. Remember that you can use any art supplies that you have, I just felt like painting today. So I'm putting my messy mat underneath my artwork so I don't get anything on my table below. And when you're painting, make sure you have a paintbrush, a water cup, and your paints. If you're using watercolor, remember that you need to wake up your colors. So get your brush wet and then tap or swirl it on your color. Never press your brush hard into the paint because you don't wanna ruin its bristles. You always want the bristles or the hair of the brush to stay nice and pointy so that it will create beautiful paintings for you. So I'm going to paint around my mittens. The cool thing about using crayons around watercolor is that it creates a resist. So the watercolor will not go over the crayon and it will keep my artwork looking nice and neat so that they don't mix together. I am all done with my line design mittens. I hope you had fun today creating your own mittens and using different types of lines to create symmetrical patterns on your pair of mittens. I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun artist!